Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Bravura Media Company. Today we've got another vintage map for you guys. It is a map of Toronto, Canada that was originally produced in 1901. This map is really, really great as it displays historical building location. It shows ferry distance. It shows ferry routes across the harbor. We've got geographical aspects marked such as marshland and rivers. Uh, this map's really great. We're going to dive in, zoom in, and explore and examine this map. But before we do, let's give a history and background to the city of Toronto. Toronto is currently the most populous city in Canada and the provincial capital of Ontario. Uh, it has a population of roughly 2,700,000 and is one of the most populous cities in North America after Mexico City, New York, and Los Angeles. If we look at the history of Toronto, we can see that when Europeans arrived in the area, the vicinity was inhabited by Iroquois Indians, who, who really had displaced the original settlers, the Huron, uh, which had occupied the area for as long back as centuries before the 1500s. The name Toronto is likely derived from the Iroquois word Tecaranto, meaning place where trees stand in the water. This refers to the northern end of what is now Lake Simcoe, where the Huron had planted tree saplings to corral the fish. However, the word Toronto, meaning plenty, also appears in French lexicon of the Huron language in 1632. In the 1660s, the Iroquois established two villages within the area we know today as Toronto. The villages were Ganatasekawagon on the banks of the Rouge River and Tiaeganon on the banks of the Humber River. By 1701, the Misagwag Indian tribe had displaced the Iroquois, who abandoned Toronto, the Toronto area at the end of the Beaver Wars. During the American Revolutionary War, the region saw an influx of British settlers as United Empire loyalists fled for British-controlled lands north of Lake Ontario. The new province of Upper Canada was in the process of creation and needed a capital. In 1787, the British Lord Dorchester arranged for the Toronto Purchase with the Misaguas, thereby securing more more than a quarter of a million acres of land in the Toronto area. Dorchester intended the location to be named, obviously, Toronto. By 1813, as part of the War of 1812, the Battle of York ended in Toronto's capture by U.S. forces. The surrender of the area led to U.S. soldiers destroying much of the garrisons and setting fire to Parliament buildings during the five-day occupation. The destruction of York, a.k.a. Toronto, was a primary motivation for British troops to set fire to Washington, D.C. later in the war. In the 1830s, Torontoans integrated people of color into their society. The city's population of 9,000 people included many that were African-American slaves that escaped to Canada. The city was one of the more integrated and progressive areas throughout North America. An example of this can be seen by a 1840s uh, eating house owner at Frederick and King Street who operated a thriving mercantile business and was also a man of color. The equality in the city was a predominant factor in Toronto's growth in that slavery had been banned outright in 1834. Coupled with the mass migration of immigrants, it made it a suitable city for people of different backgrounds to find a new, new and comfortable home. One of the major et ethnic groups that really migrated to the city were the Irish, largely because of the potato famine, just the timing of the growth of Toronto. Another important element to Toronto's history deals with booze. Toronto became the largest alcohol dist distillation center in North America. The Gooderham and Worth Distillery 
operations became the world's largest whiskey factory by the 1860s. The spirits business facilitated and accelerated by Toronto's Harbor, which allowed for access to grain and sugar imports used for processing. So that's kind of just a little bit of background of the history of Toronto. Um, let's dive into this map and kind of explore and examine. We have other maps too. This is a 2D overhead map. It has, I mean, it's just loaded with information. If we look at the, some of the other maps, this gives you a bird's eye perspective. It's a little bit haggard and old, but we've got street views of, remember we talked about that distillery? Here's the Gooderham and Wirtz distillery, a, kind of like a street view access to, to that location. And certainly we, we get some good details, some three-dimensional aspects, but this map is just, it, it's just too, it's too much in rough shape. Uh, to really give it, I mean, we've got some details, and we can see where the the ports are and the railways, but I, I don't know. There's just, and a lot of these locations aren't labeled on here, so we don't really, we can kind of compare it to the other maps. So, for example, we'll go to the the 2D map, and uh, we'll look for that distillery. So, remember we talked about that the uh, the Gooderham, I hope I spell, I'm pronouncing that right, Gooderham and Wurtz Distillery. We can see that it's right here. It's located on uh, this end of Toronto where it, it kind of uh, harbors off into the marshland. We can, if we zoom out, we can see that it's generally in this area. It's hard to pick out exactly where it is. Here, let's actually look on the street. Actually, that'll, that'll help us. It looks like uh, Trinity Street, right around Trinity Street. Let's see if we can find that on this map. See, it's hard to read. Oh, we found Trinity Street right here. Right here. So the distillery, look, this place is actually labeled. I didn't think these were labeled. I haven't looked at this map extensively, but there are. Look at 95 is labeled. That's definitely the distillery right there. Where are these numbered on the key? See, this is weird because this map should have a key, and I think it's from a different page. Yeah, it must be on a different page uh, that's not included in this map. So uh, this is the distillery right here. We use the other map to kind of conclusively identify these locations. So this is the distillery illustrated right here. But, I mean, it, it, this is an older map, and, you know, I wish that there was a key, you know, on this, but we just have to look at the other map. And certainly we saw that. Remember we talked about the War of 1812 where the U.S. troops came in and started burning facilities? Well, here's a, a garrison military. You can see military burying ground. We can see obviously that there were there, – the burning of buildings in 1812 were, and garrisons were right around this area. And remember we talked also about the parliament buildings not too far away. Here's a, a, a provincial uh, parliament building very, very close to the garrison. So we know that during the War of 1812, massive, from here to here, massive military conflict right here. So I work with metal detectors, and uh, if you're metal detecting and you're able to, to get on some, some grounds or uh, to look in this area, you might find some artifacts right, right around here, very close to the waterway. Between the garrison and the provincial buildings, I mean, there was just a lot of historical activity between these two locations. So we can see Old Fort right there. So uh, that was an interesting thing that I wanted to bring up in this video. But this map obviously displays also other characteristics. we got City Hall right there. We've got various uh, police centers, even skating rinks. Uh, we've got a provin provincial lunatic asylum. Located here, right very close to King Street. Uh, I mean, loaded with information. Here's Trinity College, not too far away from the Lunatic Asylum. We've got many Trinity Square, Department of Education up there by getting close to Carlton Street. We've got different colleges, Knox College. Very cool map. When we look at the harbor, we talked about how important the harbor was for transporting uh, goods and, and bringing in sugar and processing for the distillery. We can see one of the main ports right here. 
This is the Victoria Park Fair. We can see all the different fairies coming in. We see lighthouses. A lighthouse is illustrated right here. Baths. Pretty cool. And we see distance. I think distance is marked on these ferry routes. Ah, oh, maybe I'm not. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're showing you one mile on this half moon. So, it gives you an idea. So, very cool map that we have. We've got a jail located. Look at this, a jail. Just outside the city. By uh, Broadview. Broadview Ave. Broadview Ave. Very close to the river. Right here. River Daryl Park. We can see this is marshland illustrated throughout here. So, very cool map that we have. Uh, I hope you've learned something uh, about this video, about this the the city of De uh, Toronto. Uh, if you l enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do videos like this all the time where we look at the history of a city, whether it be Toronto, Halifax. We look at the history of Canada, uh, of different wars. We like history and we like maps. So if you like that sort of thing, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us a like on this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions about the history of Toronto or you like this map. Uh, just leave a comment below. Uh, share this video. And uh, I will see you guys soon. Okay, take care. All right, bye.